The name of this video is Photoshop and Blender Part 5 RGB Curves. In the previous tutorial we learned about color math and we applied our newly acquired knowledge to start to adjust color to our image. We separated the images red, green, and blue channels and used mathematically oriented nodes to adjust the color. In this tutorial we'll go into more depth focusing on the RGB Curves node and in my view the most powerful color correction node in Blender. The RGB Curves node lets you adjust color for either the entire image, any of its channels, or both. So let's get started. We'll ignore the default scene, jump immediately into the composite setup, check the Use Nose checkbox, and expand the image editor, removing the 3D window, so we have room to see the composited result. Finally, I'll delete the Render Layers node and add our Vermont Locomotive image and a Scale node to make the entire image visible to the image editor. Then I'll add the star of our show, the RGB Curves node, Shift-A, Color, RGB Curves. I'll connect the image node to the RGB node's image socket and the RGB Curves image socket to the Composite node's image socket. I'll expand the RGB Curves node's display a bit so we can see the graph a little better. If you like me, the first time I saw this node I was confused. What's with the graph and the diagonal line? What do the C, R, G, and B letters mean? What about the widgets, the wrench, the X, and so on? What do the white level and black level mean? It's about as bewildering a display as it gets. We won't cover absolutely everything, but hopefully at the end of this video you'll appreciate the main features and be awed by the power of this unique node. I'll explain the default setting. There are actually four curves named C, that's all three channels, R for red, G for green, and B for blue. You can manipulate each curve individually. We'll start with C, the combined curve, which affects all colors of the image. The diagonal line is defined by the bottom left point, which defines black, and the top right point, which defines white. You'll see later how black and or white can become some other color. I know some people who try to make me think black is white. I thought I knew the difference. Go oh well. Think of the x-axis as the percentage of color in the pixel and the y-axis as the new percentage in the result. By default, since the curve is a straight line, no color change occurs because, say, 0% of color, which is black, is still 0% of color. 25% color maps to 25% color on the output, 50% maps to 50% until you get 100% color white, which maps to white. Although there are plenty of technical terms that are used, I'll try to make things simple. Think of the two triangular areas that are created by the diagonal line as the lightened image triangle, above the diagonal line, and the darkened image triangle, below the diagonal line. If the curve gets pushed into the light and image area, the colors become lighter. If the curve gets pushed into the dark and image area, the colors become darker. How is this done? I'll left click on the diagonal line in the center of the graph. This creates a point. Now there are three points on the curve. With the new point selected, it's colored white. I'll left click and drag the curve into the light and image area. The image immediately becomes lighter. How did this happen? The dark areas, those with the most black, are mapped to a higher percentage of color than before when the curve was a straight line. This means that even a little black becomes more emphasized, raising its color level and thus lightening the overall image. The steepness of the curve determines the level of effect. It's more pronounced with pixels having less color, but all along the curve there's some addition of color because every point in the new curve is above its corresponding point in the diagonal line. Now I'll left click and drag the curve into the darkened image area. The image becomes darker because those pixels with less color have even less color on the output. The effect is more pronounced as the slope of the curve on the right increases until when the curve is almost on the x-axis the image becomes nearly completely dark. That's because nearly all the images get mapped so close to 0% color or black. So just by moving one point, you can control an image darkness or lightness. That's not all you can do. The colors that are not black or white, sort of in the mid-range of percentage, are technically called midtones. 
These colors are emphasized the more they are contrasted between black and white. Think of the black area, called the shadow area, on the left third of the graph, and the white area, called the lighten or highlight area, as the right third of the graph, and the midtones as the middle third of the graph. To illustrate, I'll add a point about one third of the way from the right of the curve, and then left click and drag it up. I'll drag the other point down to about one third of the way to the left towards the black area. Note that the colors become more emphasized. That's because the contrast between the color and either black or white is more emphasized. This is a way of bringing out color, or muting it if you do the opposite, as a way to change the effect of the light when you actually took the picture. You take a picture at high noon on a cloudless sunny day, and you might want to make it look as if it were taken at dusk or early morning on a cloudy day, for example. Another effect. If you increase the slope of the curve in the middle, you reduce the number of colors in the image. This is an effect called posterize, create a poster-like effect. There are filters that do this kind of effect in Blender, the GIMP, and Photoshop. It's a very common special effect. You can add or delete points on a curve. To add a point, left-click anywhere along the curve. You can then move that point. To delete a point, click the X icon. Don't press the X key because that deletes the node. I'll press the X key. Fortunately, we have our friend Control Z to restore the node. And I'll also have to press F12 to re-render everything because once the node was deleted and then restored, the rendering and then the compositing had to be redone. You can create interesting curve shapes. If you want to get rid of all the points and reset the curve to its default, click the little wrench icon and select Reset Curve. We're back to where we started. You might ask, what do the black level and white level mean? After all, isn't black at the lower left and right at the upper right? Yes, but you can map the initial level of black or white to another color. To illustrate, I'll create a heat map, something you see a lot of on TV and in the movies. This shows the degree of hotness in the image. I'll make the black level blue, and I'll make the white level red. Basically, instead of the colors being mapped from black to white, there's some combination of blue and red. There's no green at all in the image. You can make some really interesting effects just by playing with these levels. I'll return the levels back to black and white. That's quite a bit of control we have over the image, just with this one curve. But wait, there's more. All of this control applies to each of the channels. The red, green, and blue curves are independent of the combined curves. I'll play with the red curve, then switch to the green curve, and then the blue curve. I hope you agree that the RGB curves node is an amazing widget. Pick out one of your favorite images and play around with it. With the knowledge you've gained, you should be able to produce some very interesting results. There's plenty more color manipulation to talk about in future videos. See you there. Happy blendering.